Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing another one of my mystery videos. I really enjoy doing these and I hope you enjoy watching them. And um, make sure to leave in the comments below any other videos or mysteries that you'd like to make to cover that you would like to see. And if you'd like to see what today's mystery is, just keep watching. Okay, so today's video is going to be on the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. She was an 18 year old girl from Alabama and she actually went missing on a senior trip to Aruba right after she graduated high school. She vanished May 30th, 2005 and was never seen again. No bodies were ever found, no leads were ever given. They just, they don't know what happened to her and it's crazy because she just vanished without a trace there. I mean, there's no DNA. There's no nothing on this case. Like, it just, she just vanished out of nowhere. Nobody knows what happened to her. Okay, she was on a graduation trip to Aruba from Alabama. She was actually from Mountain Brook, Alabama. And she was on this graduation trip with 124 other students and seven chaperones. And the chaperones were given the instruction to not really know every move the kids did to kind of give them their space and let them have fun and just kind of be there if they needed a chaperone but most of them were of age of 18 there so they could all drink they could get into any of the bars they could all party they could basically do whatever they wanted and the chaperones were just kind of there to kind of keep an eye on them just to make sure nothing happened to them on the morning of may 30th she was scheduled to get on a plane to go back home to alabama and she missed her flight and that kind of um arose suspicion as to where she was. Her mom and stepdad immediately booked a flight or flew private jet to Aruba because they had noticed that she had missed her flight. She had not contacted them since the day before and they thought that was very unlike her. So they got on a private jet with a few of their friends and immediately flew to Aruba. Upon investigation and talking with some of the classmates, she had not been seen since the night before. Um, around 1.30 a.m. or the morning before around 1.30 a.m. She was getting into a car with three other guys, the um, Jordan Vandersloot and Deepak and Sadish Kalpo. They were 17, 18, and 21, I believe. And she was seen leaving a nightclub in Aruba, getting into a car with them and then driving off and that was the last she was seen. All of her classmates, when they were interviewed, said that she had been excessively drinking like a lot more than anybody else did um that she was drinking from the time she woke up to the time she went to bed so she was pretty inebriated all day long and they said i mean all of her classmates said that, yes they were all drinking but hers was a little bit more excessive than theirs and that she was kind of um i guess acting a little bit different than everybody else getting a lot drunker than everybody else and was going off and doing things that not she normally wouldn't do, I guess because she was away from her parents and everything else, so she just kind of acted a fool. So her luggage and her passport was still found in her room, which kind of made everyone think that she didn't run away because why would she have left all of her stuff behind? She, I mean, she wouldn't have, so they thought that something had happened to her because everything was left in her room. And, it and upon looking through camera footage from the hotel. She had never entered the hotel lobby again from the night she was missing. So she never came back through the hotel. She was never caught on any of the footage on any of the cameras at the hotel. And that made them think that she didn't come back to the hotel. But someone also said that she didn't have to go through the lobby to get to her room. So she wouldn't necessarily have been picked up on the cameras in the lobby, but she should have been picked up on the cameras outside of the hotel which kind of arose suspicious as to whether the cameras were actually working. And her mom actually wrote a book and made numerous different statements as to whether the cameras were working or not. She just went back and forth on both of those. And she kind of stuck with the cameras were not working the night before and the night of her disappearance, that they had kind of just frozen at a standstill and nothing was tracked on the cameras. So they wouldn't have picked up if she had came in or not anywhere. Also, within a few hours of Beth and Jug Twitty's arrival, um, they identified Vandersloot and took the Aruban police to his house to kind of question him as to whether where he had seen their daughter 
And upon first questioning, he didn't know who she was. He denied knowing her. But then later on said that they did hang out, that they went to the beach because she wanted to see sharks. They drove her back to her hotel and dropped her off. And she was extremely drunk and fell out of the vehicle as they got there. And he offered to help and she denied help. And she said she was fine. She was just going to go upstairs to her room. And as she was leaving before they pulled away, um, a man in a black shirt and dark pants kind of resembling a security officer came up to her and he said that was the last they saw of her was talking to this security guard they didn't stay to see if she went to her room or not and he said they drove off and the brothers were actually at the house the time her parents came to question him and they both agreed with Vander Sloot's story hundreds of volunteers immediately began searching and the Aruban police also gave a um, off day to all civilians to help with the police and they also had 50 Dutch Marines, Aruban investigators, um, American special agents, specially equipped Dutch Air Force, and divers to kind of look through the whole area to just thoroughly search for this girl. And the Aruban banks also raised $20,000 to help fund the search of this girl, but um, nothing was ever found. And multiple people have been arrested since then in connection with this case, including Vandersloot, the brothers, two security guards, and a disc jockey named D. Steve Gregory Crows, but those leads never went anywhere. They never were able to charge anybody with anything, and on January 12th, 2007, the Aruban prosecutors announced that the case would have been closed even though no charges were made. So they said that the investigation was going nowhere. They could not find a suspect. They could not make any leads in any case, so they were going to close the case without being solved. On February 1st, 2008, 13 months later, um, the case was reopened after receiving video footage of Vander Sloot, who appeared to be under the influence of marijuana, um, saying that Holloway died the morning of her disappearance and that one of his friends helped dispose of her body. Upon questioning him, he denied that this ever happened, that he ever said that, and he then admitted that he sold her into sex slavery, which he also later retracted. Um, in 2012, Vandersloot was convicted of the murder of Stephanie Ramirez in Peru and um, this was done back in May 30th of 2010 so he was arrested for that murder but was never charged for Holloway's murder and Holloway's parents criticized the police a lot because of their lack of progress that was made in the investigation even after all of the interrogations of the last three men, men she was seen with and her parents called for a boycott of Aruba but there wasn't enough backing and there wasn't enough support to boycott Aruba so that never went anywhere and um, on January 12th 2012 the Alabama judge Alan King declared Holloway legally dead in absentia which means even though they don't know what happened to her they don't know if she's alive or not her absence has been so long and there's no trace of her anywhere so he declared her legally dead okay so this case is pretty old, but the reason I am bringing it back up now is because a couple weeks ago on August 16th, 2017, Holloway's father has a private investigator who has been working on this case the whole time his daughter has been missing. He recently discovered um, human remains and they are to be DNA tested as to whether they were Holloway's or not. Um, he found a couple of different sets of human remains and they, I guess, upon first glance they kind of resemble what Holloway should have been and so they're getting those DNA tested and I really hope that they can close this case for this father's sake because and her family's sake because it's been years and they don't know what happened to their daughter they don't know if she's alive if she's dead they they don't know what happened to her so I really hope that they get that closure that they need and I really hope this new lead helps close this case all right guys that's so that's it for today's mystery video i hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to my channel before you leave and make sure to leave in the comment section any other mysteries that you're interested in or any other video recommendations i'm down for any recommendations any of you have because this channel is for y'all to enjoy so i want y'all to be a part of what i film and i hope you enjoy the video like i said like and subscribe and we will see you next time bye